Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. Invite your friends. Invite your friends. This morning I want to talk about relationships, the do's and don'ts, and home training. This morning I want to talk about relationships, the do's and don'ts, and home training. Something that's been on my heart, and it's something that I just want to uh, talk about, express, help. I'm 50 years old, been a parent for a long time, been a leader for a while, a long time. I've been in ministry for 30 years, and what I want to do, I just want to help people, help families, help God's people, because in order for us to become unified as a people, uh, we must be unified within ourselves. And there are certain uh, steps, there are certain rules, there are certain groundwork that we need in order to make things better. And that's what it's all about, make things better. Give me 15 more seconds and we'll get started. I'm going to talk about relationships, do's and don'ts, and home training. Relationship. <clears throat> and that's going to be able to talk about in a marriage, in a relationship. And also, as leaders, how it's supposed to look. How it's supposed to look. Ethics and protocols. Ethics and protocol. Ethics and protocol. One means to how you act, how you're supposed to act, and then also how you're supposed to treat people. Basic. How you act and how you're supposed to treat people. Jesus taught the disciples this with the Beatitudes. How to act and how to treat people. Good morning, Christy. I'm going to get started. I'm going to get started. Uh, as an example, one of the things, even as a relationship, as far as between um, two parents, two parents, the first thing that must happen is that two parents must get along. They must trust each other and they must respect each other. Because if there's no respect, there's no trust, and there's definitely no love. You have to get that right. The Bible says that how can two people walk together except they be in agreement? There has to be an agreement. There has to be an agreement. There has to be an understanding. And the way that you get this understanding is by communication. That's the only way you can understand each other. It's by your words. Because it's not by assuming, assumption, but a communication. The Bible says that a man should dwell with a woman according to knowledge. That means they must talk. That means that in him talking, she must listen. Not to have something in her mind that she wants to say in response, but listen to him first. That way, because oftentimes when you have stuff in your mind or in your emotion, your emotions will block out what it is that person is saying, and then your understanding will become unfruitful. So basically what you need to do is to listen. That's how you start a relationship, to listen. The Bible says, how can two people walk together except they be in agreement? The agreement comes when there's a rhythm. Communicate, uh, ag agreement comes when both can relate. Relationship. That's what a relationship it is, where you, where you can have, where you can talk about certain things, even if you disagree, but you're able to talk about certain things. Let me give you an example. Me and my wife, I've known her seven years, and, you know, we've had some disagreements and stuff like that. And one of the things that I've tried to do and I always try to do and my kids wonder why, you know, I'm quiet and I, I'm able to hold certain things. It's even when me and my wife has a disagreement, what I would do before... I respond, even, even if I'm angry or upset at something that my wife would say, I would think about it. And you know what I would think about? I would think about what it is they're going to say and how it's going to affect that person. Even though I'm angry, I have to filter what I'm saying because what I'm saying, if I say the wrong thing, everything that I worked so hard to have, it will be destroyed in one word. But not only that, not only that, because we have a blended family and with my son Daniel, so Dylan, I have to be careful how I respond to her because I'm dad and I'm a man. And, and I told my son, I said, you want to know what a father looked like? Look at me. Watch me. You want to know how to act? Watch me. And so based on how I respond, it's going to determine how you're going to respond. So what I will do, even though I might be angry, based on how I respond to her, it's going to determine, it's going to teach her. How, or it's going to teach my kids how uh, they should respond to their woman. See, because I'm dad. With Daniel, I'm dad.
And I'm the highest standard of a man that he's going to ever meet. He want to be like me. In a like manner, if you look at it even as far as uh, the mother concerned, with, with the mother, you're the highest standard. You're the first woman in that kid's life. Which means is that how you respond and how you act, that's going to determine when they grow up, how they're going to respond and how they react. And they're going to think whether it's going to be cool or not cool. Case in point, with, with, a, with a woman and a man. If the two couples, if y'all arguing, what's going to happen, many, there are many kids that are raised up. They are raised up, confused, and divided. Why? It's because mom and dad brought them and raised them up in, in, in division. Mom and dad always fighting. Mom and dad always having disagreements. And so what happens is that kids don't just learn what you say. They learn what you do. Do you hear me? It's not what you say, but it's what you do. That's what they're learning. They're learning that. They're learning that, okay, if, if daddy can talk to mama any kind of way, then I can talk to my woman any kind of way. Or if mama can talk to daddy any kind of way, that even sets up a precedence for, for a man, for, for a child to think it's okay for a woman to talk or her mama to talk to daddy any kind of way. Which means that, that that little boy, he's going to grow up thinking when he gets older that any woman can talk to him any kind of way. Because mama did it. Or in like manner, daddy did it. So we have to have, be accountable for how we act. We do. We can't be selfish. We cannot be selfish because we are raising the next generation. In a church, if, if, the, if the, the husband and the wife don't agree, it's going to show in the, in the congregation. It's going, they are raising a congregation in the midst of division. That's why they must be in agreement. Even if they, they have disagreements, you work those things out because it's not what you say, but it's what people see. That's what's shaping them. That's why the Bible says that uh, uh, train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they will not part from it. Training starts from the crib. Because from the crib, uh, the ch a child is wicked. The Bible said, uh, as soon as the child is born, that child goes from speaking lies. And it's our job to train them and teach them how to act and how not to act. Because you have to teach a child how to act wrong or to do wicked or to be sneaky. You have to teach them how to do what's right. Hear me. Hear me. You have to teach them what, how to do it. Also, the Bible says that foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. Foolishness. But the Bible said the rod of correction will drive it far from them. The rod, the rod, paddling, discipline. That's what's going to run them out. But every time your child act up a certain kind of way, it, it's your job to get it, get that seed right now. Because if you don't get it now, if you don't drive that thing out now, when they get older, they're going to become completely defiant. They ain't going to respect you. They ain't going to respect you. They're not going to respect you. Kids do what they see. Even as leaders, if, if you don't respect each other, then your members ain't going to respect you. They ain't going to be that long. You lead from the front. You lead not with what you say, but you lead with what you do. It's your action. Just like with my kids. One time, my kids, I let my kids know, y'all need to control your anger. You need to control your temper. My son said, you can't. Yes, you can. Because when you think about the consequences before you do it, then you, 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 you'll, know how to, you'll know how to think first. Because, because if you do certain things, you can lose your life. There are many people in jail now because they did stuff without thinking. Because they weren't raised right. Because they weren't raised right how they should be based on the word. Home training, ethics and protocol. In other words, when, when, you come, when it comes to loving someone, when it comes to being an example, you have to consider, you got to consider that person's feelings before you say what you say. You have to think about it. And the thing about it, there's no perfect relationship. There's no perfect parent. There's no perfect mother. There's no perfect fa father. If they tell you that they're lying, it's all trial and error. We all learn as we go. We all make mistakes, but at some point we correct our mistakes. We have to look back at even in a relationship, when a relationship is on the rock, then we have to look at, well, what part did I play? It's not all that other person's fault. It's both fault. It takes two. It takes two. Just like it takes two people to argue, it takes two people to have a relationship. It takes two people to have a baby. It takes two people. And so that's why you have to come to the point where what is it that what is it about me? What am I doing wrong? If you're in a relationship and you feel like and you feel that your relationship keep looking and keep looking the same way, where it keep ending the same way, you keep coming up with the same problem, then you have to consider not just the other person, but you consider me. What is it that I'm doing wrong? What is it that I can correct that can make that relationship better? Do you hear me? And it starts from ethics and protocol. How to act. 
how to act and how you treat people. Because the Bible tells us to do unto others have do unto do unto others as you, as you have them do unto you. Love your neighbor as yourself. You, you see, in other words, if you want people to treat you nice, if you want people to treat you with love, then it starts with you. You have to treat them with love because everything is seed time and harvest. What you put out is gonna come back. What you put in is gonna come is gonna come out. It's gonna come out. And anything in school, in studying, the, the the more you study, the more you concentrate, the more you're gonna get a good grade. But the less you focus and concentrate, the less you're going to get a good grade. Common sense. And that calls focus. With relationship, with relationship, what you put in it is what you're going to get out. If you put the time, if you put patience in it, patience is going to come out. If you put time in, time is going to come out. If you put respect in, respect is going to come out. Because the opposite of respect is disrespect. That means that when you disrespect someone, you're not going to listen to nothing they're saying. In other words, also, when you disrespect the person, you will say anything to them because you don't care. But when you respect the person, you care about their feelings. You care about what they think and how they feel. So, which means that before you do certain things, you'll think about the consequences of how that person feels before you do it. But that comes with trial and error. Ain't no perfect parent. Ain't no perfect man. Ain't no perfect woman. Ain't no perfect pastor. Ain't no perfect first lady. Ain't no perfect no one. But it's trial and error. And it starts with respect. If I can respect you, then I can love you. If I love you, I'm going to trust you. If I trust you, I love you and I respect you, I'm going to talk to you with respect. And what I'm doing is I'm planting seeds of respect. I'm planting seeds of love. And who's watching that? The kids. And another thing, and another thing that, that I noticed too, even relationship with parents, when parents break up, when parents break up also, and maybe they break up from, it was a bad breakup. Oftentimes because they're mad at each other, you know, they oftentimes put their kid in the middle. Where they put their kid in the middle where the kid had to choose who to love or who to listen to. And that's sad. And that comes when you're talking about that child, or talking about that mother to that child, or talking about that father to that mother. That's wrong. Because what you're doing, you're creating confusion. You're making that child decide who to love or who to turn to. And you know what's going to happen? When that child is with you, that child is going to lie to please you. And when that child with their father, the child with their father, that child is going to lie to please their father. Or when the mother is going to lie to please their mother. So don't put that child in that particular situation because it's not right. You're raising them to become divided. Because they don't know who to choose, who to choose, who to believe. That's confusion. That's confusion. And we as parents are held accountable. Even as leaders, we're held accountable. Just like, just like when the man uh, uh, came to these people, these three people, and gave them talent, one, five, two, and one. And he told them to occupy till he come. And he went away when he came back. The one had five talents, work, work, and the one had two, work, but the one that had one didn't do nothing at all. But, so when the master came back, he saw that the one that had done nothing, he took the one that he had and gave it to one that had five. But the other ones, they worked. The one that had five, he got five. He got, he got five more. The one that had two, he got two more. In other words, he gave, he, they were stewards. In other words, God had, they, they were given something that he had, they had to manage and had to watch over and make sure they grow until a certain place, until a certain place where that master came back. It's the same thing with whatever God gives us. If God gives us kids, if God gives us people in our life, it's our job to watch over them. That's why the seed is very important. Jesus said he sent his word out. And, it's, and it accomplished what it's accomplished. And he said he watched over his word. And it will not return unto him void. See, our future, our kids are very important. People who are watching, even as believers, it's very important how we act. It's very important how we treat each other. Because based on how we act toward each other, it's going to determine whether or not they come to us for help. It's being an example. That's why we must be careful. Because seed is very important because there's one guy in the Bible that when God told him to use his seed to bring a baby, but he used his seed and put it in the ground and spilled it, God killed him. So God take this personal because God said, God said, God said, when you're faithful over few things, he'll make you rule over many. But if you're not faithful over what God has given you, the small stuff, why would God trust you with anything else? It's about your accountability. It's not about nobody else but you as a man, as a woman, as a leader. How you respond, how you act. It's not in how you react, it's how you respond. How you respond. When somebody says something to you, what are you going to do? You're going to respond just like they respond or you're going to think about it first. Think about the consequences first. Did you not know I had a friend one time? This guy, ste he stepped on this guy's shoe on his birthday. And the fact that he stepped on his shoe, the guy killed him. Why? 
Why? Emotions. Emotions. And the way to control your emotions is by having a relationship with God. How to control your emotions is by communication. Even in a relationship. When you talk to that person, if you talk to that person, if you talk to that person, and when you know a person's mind, you'll know their words, you'll know their heart, then you'll know how to get at them. You'll, you'll know how they feel. You don't assume, you don't assume a certain thing until you get all the answers. You talk to that person, you talk to those people, then you draw your conclusion. Now that's wisdom. And that's one of the things through trial and error that I've learned is that I don't react first. I try to listen. And then I have to think about the consequences. I have to think about who's watching me. Especially as not only as a, a father, but also as a leader. I just can't do and say anything I want to say. I can't just empty my feelings and think it's cool. No, there's a consequence with that. There are people in jail because they didn't think. They reacted before they thought. There are people dead because they reacted before they, before they thought. It goes back to home and training. Ethics and protocol. How you act and how you treat people. So my, my question is, how are you going to act? How are you going to respond? See, because the Bible says that there's life and death in our mouth, in the power of the tongue. There's life and death. That's why God told us to be pushed to him and slow to speak. When you get in a situation, you must be, you must assess the situation. You must assess why this situation coming. What's, what, what, is, what is happening? What's going on? What is it that I need to learn from this situation? What, what is it trying to do? Then you have to realize that this situation is trying to pull me out and pull me out of my example. Pull me, out, pull me out of my testimony because somebody is watching me. What is it that somebody says something to me wrong out in public and I go upside their head? How would that look as, as a father, as a leader? What kind of precedent would that give me for my kids? So what I'm doing, I'm letting them know that it's right for me to act in a kind of way. It's right for me to say anything I want to say. No, we all got to give an account for everything that's done in our body. Oftentimes, and what's unfortunate, you find a lot of, and it's unfortunate, you find a, you know, you read what you sow. It's unfortunate. You find a lot of old elderly people, a lot of times when they, when they put in, in old folks' home and they don't have no kids that come see them. And a lot of times it's, it, it's, it's a stem from how they raised them. It's still from how they groomed them. Because if you raise your kids right, if you can't raise your kids with respect and honor, they're going to respect you when they get older. They will. That's the foundation. But if you raise your kid under, under confusion and raise them in the kind of way, act in the kind of way, talk in the kind of way, you're raising them to be divided. You're raising them to be angry. And what we have, we have a lot of angry, angry young adults because many parents weren't there. They didn't raise them right. They didn't talk to them right. They didn't. They acted in the kind of way and that's an indication of how they were raised. If you got a kid, if you got a kid now that they're grown, just talking in the kind of running their mouth in the kind of way, that's an indicator of how they were raised. I've never seen in this particular kind of generation where young folk talk to elder people in a kind of way, in a kind of way, in a kind of way. When I was a kid, I talked back to my mom. My mama bust me in my mouth. Today you go to jail for it, but that was respect. Fear, that's where it starts. The Bible said the beginning of wisdom is to fear the Lord. Fear means that fear means I'm going to respect you enough not to do certain things. That's why my son Daniel goes to school. I tell him, remember how you was raised. Remember your home training because anything you, how you act in school is going to reflect on me and your mama how we raise you. You're, you're going in the name. You're going in my name. And so if you're going in my name, you got to act right. If not, there's going to be consequences when you get home. No cussing, no acting crazy, nothing like that. Because the first thing the teacher going to do, they're going to call me. Yeah, your son doing this, doing that. So it's, it, with every action, there's a reaction. There's a consequence. Think about that. Think about that in your life. Think about that when you, when you open up your mouth. Think about what you, when you become angry. When somebody says something that you don't like because the devil's going to send something. And send someone to you and say something that you don't like. How are you going to respond? Are you going to allow the devil, are you going to allow that situation to expose you and make you look a certain way? Or are you going to do the right thing? Are you going to use wisdom? There's a, way, there's a way with everything. Wisdom is the principal thing. I'm done. God bless you. Home trainer.